Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom, the land become full of wickedness. And I'm so glad I didn't turn out to be a daddy, cause it could be so easy to just give up my body. I got anger inside me, I know these demons plotting, just know that God is watching my works. Purple, no stopping, chosen, go rank, just watch this, you know, the traps is locking, my spirit clocking, I'm aiming to end the demons, I cannot miss. The most I blessed me with this, and now I feel so much bliss. No two choice with no bubble, it ain't no option for this. Hmm. Well, sis, you must avoid the abyss. The lake of fire gon' miss, cause we on fire for his glory and power equipped. I feel the ruach with this, I feel the spirit of miss. I know the devil is pissed. We different levels with this, and we gon' take what he took. So you can call this a lick. Haters can't see me a bit. To them, I'm something like miss. The most I giving me gifts. I feel like Santa, but rich. Me and Cash, we gotta hit. One of a kind is a must be, 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 one of a kind is a All right, Shalom, Shalom, and Shalom. Welcome to the New Wine Congregation of Israel Law School. All right, we're going to get started giving our honor and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, we're going to get started. We're going to face the East and pray. Ladies, if you don't have your head covered, please do so now. Brothers, if you don't have your, if you do have your head covered, please uncover your head. We can get started with prayer. Thank you, Abba. Most our God, we humbly bow before your throne to say thank you for allowing us to gather in your precepts, to study your law, statutes, and commandments. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit be upon this Bible study. We pray that you lead God and direct us through the Spirit and what we should do and what we shouldn't do to separate the clean from the unclean, the holy from the unholy, Father. We thank you so much for giving us back our heritage, for waking us up in these last days in the land of our captivity. Father, we pray that your spirit be upon those who are weak in the spirit, strengthen those brothers and sisters who may be struggling to stay in this truth, teetering on the, on the brink of falling out of the truth and going back into the world. Father, we pray that you stretch forth your mighty hand, use your mighty prophets, the brothers and the sisters in this truth who are strong to pull those who are weak and feeble back into the truth, Father. We pray that you you draw closer to those who are trying and making effort to draw close to you. Father, in these last days, we pray that you keep us from temptation, Father. But when temptation is presented, Father, we pray that you show us the door. Show us the way out in every situation. Manifest and, and make known your way to us, Father. Help us to have discernment. We, we pray that you strengthen our discernment in these last days. Father, help us to have application of your law, statutes, and commandments, not to just know the precepts, not to just be able to call to, to memory, but to apply what we learn in the scriptures on a day-to-day -day basis, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, Father, help us to meditate on you. We ask that you forgive us for our sins, but we have sinned against you willingly and unwillingly, Father. Open up our eyes so that we can behold wondrous things in thy precepts, so that we can sin less, so that we can offend less, Father. All these things we pray through the blood of your son, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Amen. 
our praises to the most high. All right. So um, like I said, welcome back to law school. We're going to jump back in where we left off with um, Leviticus chapter 27. All right. That's the last chapter of Leviticus. So let's go there. Let's see who we got on here. All right. Can I get a brother to um, volunteer to read, please? Kyle, I got you. All right, the water. Let's go to Leviticus 27. And let's start from verse 1. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 1. And the Lord Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When a man shall make a singular vow, the person shall be for the Lord Yahweh by the estimation. All right, so it says when a person shall make a singular vow. All right, this is a vow in terms of you as an individual, what you or a singular person is going to do for the most high. All right, so what we're about to get into is those vows that are made by estimation according to whether you're a man, woman, or a child, uh, and depending on your age, there are different stipulations for that. All right, so let's read on verse three. Verse number three, and thy estimation shall be of the male from 20 years old, even unto 60 years old. Even thy estimation shall be 50 shekels of silver after the shekels of the sanctuary. All right. So basically what you got going on here is saying thy estimation shall be of the male from 20 years old, even to 60. So a uh, 20 year old man to a 60 year old man, the estimation based on that person is sick is 50 shekels of silver basically what that's saying is our sanctuary would be as a, such a uh, sort of a depository or a bank all right you you could go to a sanctuary and um you could ask for uh help and, and as far as monetarily speaking all right so if you were 20 years old to 60 years old you could say 50 shekels we'll just say for, for the um purpose of explanation, that's fifty thousand dollars, right? You could say that uh, that's fifty thousand, right? If you look up a shekel, it's worth in today's dollars, it's like eleven grams of gold, all right, or uh, or eleven point five grams of silver, all right. But it was way more then. We're dealing with inflation now, and the International Monetary Fund regulating everybody's uh, value of money, but We'll say for the sake of conversation, this is fifty thousand dollars. So they would basically say, if you're twenty to sixty years old, you could ask the the most you could ask for would be fifty thousand dollars. They they would count on you to pay that back. All right, so that's what we're reading. So let's read on verse four. Verse number four. And if it be a female, then thy estimation shall be thirty shekels. Mm -hmm. Verse number five. And if it be from five years old, even unto 20 years old, then thy estimation shall be of the male 20 shekels and for the female 10 shekels. All right. So you can see a difference between a male and a female. And the reason for that is because a uh, female, she may be a single parent. Her husband may have died. Right. She may have less of an ability to pay that money back as much money back versus a young man in his thirties who's um, still strong and able to work. All right. You're dealing with um, getting money and wealth in terms of uh, going to war and collecting spoil or uh, just working in your field. All right. So a, a woman would be less likely to be able to do, she couldn't go to war first and foremost, her main duty would consist of, of rearing the children and taking care of the home. Right. Let's get let's get a quick precept on that. Let's go to Titus. All right, Titus. Let's read verse two, chapter two, and let's read two, uh, verse three through five. Titus chapter 2, verse 3. The aged woman, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not giving too much wine, 
teach the good things. Mm-hmm. Verse number four, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Verse number five, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of Yahweh be not blasphemy. All right. So this is a description of what a woman's primary uh, job is or primary focus should be these things. Though a woman can work, she can uh, contribute to her household like it talks about in Proverbs 31. Um, she can definitely do that. But her primary focus is to do these things listed here. So if she's doing all this, especially being a keeper at home. She has less uh, of a chance that she's going to be able to pay back larger sums of money. All right. Versus uh, as a as a in opposition to that man. Right. He may have more chance to pay back that money. So, all right, let's go back to Leviticus 27 and let's read verse six. Leviticus chapter 27, verse six. And if he be from a, a month old, even to five years old, then thy estimation shall be of the of the male five shekels of silver. And for the female, thy estimation shall be three shekels of silver. All right, so you could get a, a loan for it. You, you could have a just had a new baby and get a, a loan for your child. All right, I just had a new baby. Um, I need a little boost. All right, you go to the priest, show them the child, present that child, show them that you actually had that child, and then they would give you um money. All right, let's get a quick precept. So this is like going into how we did things monetarily speaking, right? We discontinued from this type of knowledge. Now, a lot of us today, we're, we're financially illiterate, right? And this is why. Let's read Jeremiah 17 and 4. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Mm -hmm. So we discontinue from our heritage, right? We did that via the, uh, the curses. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. So now things are upside down today deuteronomy chapter 28 and let's start at verse 43 deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 43 the stranger that is within thee shall get above thee very high and thou shalt come down very low mm -hmm. verse 44 verse, verse number 44 he shall lend to thee and thou shalt not lend to him he shall be the head and thou shalt be the tail. All right, so that's what we see today. All right. We see that we are on the bottom. The strangers lend to us and we 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 don't bar, we don't lend to them. All right. You you there may be a few, a handful of black owned banks, if that. All right. But at, even with that, they'll they'll still be regulated by the United States government. All right. Which is meaning that we don't have full control over our, our money. The way that we did back then. All right. So let's go back to Leviticus 27. Let's read verse seven. Verse number seven. And if it be from 60 years old and above, if it be a male, then thy estimation shall be 15 shekels. And for the female, 10 shekels. All right. So you see it's less for the older in age. All right. We can come back to doing things like this um, when it comes to terms of alms. Um, the congregation uh giving out help to um people in the congregation you know um it's good to be able to pay those things back right but it's also good to give without expectation of return all right so for an elderly person it's less chance 60 years and above you know it's less of a chance that you're going to get that money back okay you're in the year of jubilee all debts were free all right, everybody who was bond, a bond servant could go free. Um, fields who that were sold could be re uh, redeemed if they weren't paid for in full. You got those things back during the year, the year of Jubilee. Okay, so a person up in age like this, the chances that they, they're going to live to pay you back are slim. All right, so they got less of a estimation or qualification for, for higher loans. Okay, let's read verse eight. Verse number eight. But if he be poor, then thy estimation 
Then he shall present himself before the priest, and the priest shall value him. According to his ability, that vow shall the priest, I mean, yeah, that vow shall the priest shall value, value him. Right. So if you were poor in your estimation, meaning say you were 20 years old, right? You were you were uh within that age range, but you had um a deformity of your body, you had one arm or something, right? You would present yourself to the priest and he would literally decide, like look at you and say, Okay, you're not you're not able to pay what you should be able to pay. So I'm gonna give you a little less. Right, or I'll make your um return that you have to pay back a little less than what I normally would. All right. And this is this is spiritual when you look at it. All right. Uh Moses was the lawgiver, right? But Aaron was the high priest. So when you look at Moses, man, Moses represented what we should be. All right. He represented the thing that we should all aspire to. But if you couldn't aspire to that, then you had Aaron. All right. And Aaron would be the priest that would look at you and value you uh, where it says poor to thy estimation. And then it's turned over to Aaron. All right. Let's get a priest up. So we were all supposed to aspire to Moses. Hold on one second. Uh, numbers. Hmm. Yeah, Numbers chapter 12. Let's read verse 3. Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. All right, so that tells you a lot about Moses. Moses was very meek. There was no one more meeker than Moses. Moses was a meeker man than all the men which are upon the face of the earth. So Moses was what we were aspiring to, all right? The same way we aspire to be like our heavenly father. Let's get another precept. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48. Yes, sir. Five and forty-eight. Matthew chapter five, verse forty-eight. Be therefore perfect, even as your father which is in heaven. All right. Be perfect. therefore perfect, even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. All right. That's what we are striving to be. That's what we aspire to be. Right. Um. Hold on, real quick. Let me see something. Yeah, let's go to first John. But we know that we are in this flesh, right? So this is a spiritual side of it. If any man, if it be poor, then not estimation. If Leviticus 27 and verse 8, but if he be poor, then not estimation. If you don't, if you're not perfect, as your father, as in heaven, is perfect, right? Then the priest shall estimate it. Who's the high priest now? Yahweh Shah. All right, let's read uh first John chapter two and verse one. First John chapter two, verse one. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach the righteous. Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach the righteous, right? If any man sin, we have an advocate, right? That's the same thing as saying. If he be poorer than thy estimation, if you don't measure up the way that you're supposed to measure up, then we have an advocate. All right. So even I always say, man, even though we don't uh, we don't have a sanctuary anymore, we don't do um, animal sacrifices. We still need to learn about all our laws because the law is our heritage. It's literally our heritage. So in order to understand the things of the spirit, we have to understand the carnal side of things. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, Leviticus 27, let's read verse 9. Leviticus chapter 27, verse 9. And if it be a beast whereof men bring an offering unto the Lord Yahweh, all that any man giveth of such unto the Lord Yahweh shall be holy. Okay, so if you brought a beast, basically you had an ox, 
all right? And this ox was plowing your field. That's a type of animal that you could make an offering with, a clean animal. You can read about the clean animals in Leviticus, uh, well, the clean and the unclean animals in Leviticus chapter 11. All right, so if any, if it be a beast that you're going and bringing to the sanctuary to sell or trade or, or barter for, basically to, to take a loan out on, if it were of men bring an offering unto you, how will all that any man giveth of such, if it's a clean animal, shall be holy? You gotta, you you can't get that same animal back. Basically, that's the most, that's the Lord's now, right? Verse 10. Verse number 10. He shall not alter it nor change it, a good for a bad, or a bad for a good. And if he shall at all change beast for beast, then it and the exchange thereof shall be holy. All right. So if you exchange beast for beast, meaning you're not going to get your same beast back, chances are you're not because that beast going to get old. It might die or they're going to use it in a sacrifice. But if you want that same beast type of beast, you want you brought a cow, you want to get a cow. All right. Then the exchange thereof shall be holy. All right. It's got to be a clean animal. All right. Verse 20, verse 11. Verse number 11. And if it be un and if it be any unclean beast of which they do not offer a sacrifice unto the Lord Yahweh, then he shall present the beast before the priest. All right. So if it's an unclean beast now, you see he's making a difference between a clean and an unclean beast. These clean beasts always represented Yahweh Shai. All right. Let's go to precept. We're coming right back. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 9, which was a figure for the time then present, and which were offended both gifts and huh. sacrifices, which were offered. Not make him that did the service perfect, as yeah. pertaining to the conscience. Kind, kind. So it says, which was a figure for the time then present, and which were offered both gifts and sacrifices All right so we offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make them that did the service perfect so these things none of these things even though it was a clean beast it didn't make us perfect All right reverse 10 verse number 10 which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances and imposed on them until the time of reformation all right, Yahweh Shah reformed things. He changed it. All right, let's get an example. Uh, let's go to the next chapter, Hebrews chapter 10. So, all these animals represent Yahweh Shah. Let's read verse 1. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the, and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year, continually make the comers that are unto perfect. It can make us perfect, right? Verse 2. Verse number 2. For then would they have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have no more, have had no more conscious of sins. All right, we would have never stopped offering them if they could make us perfect. Read on. Verse number 3. When in those sacrifices... There is a remembrance again made of sins every year. So those sacrifices, when you see that animal die, you realize that that's supposed to be you in its place. So it made you remember it. All right? With Yahweh Shai, it's supposed to. It's, you're not supposed to remember those things, right? Especially when we had a day of atonement, you confess those sins. Your slate is wiped clean. Uh, thus saith the Lord. Right? Read on verse four. Verse number four, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Can't take away sins. Read on. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he says, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Right. Yahweh Shah's body became the sacrifice and the offering. So all of these things, all these animal sacrifices were spiritual. All right, it represented the Most High Son, Yahweh Shah. All right, and then it says in verse 7, he comes in the volume of the book is written of him. So what we're reading is spiritual. 
All right, so when he says in verse 9, if it be a beast whereof man bring an offering unto Yahweh, all that any man giveth of such unto Yahweh shall be holy. Yahweh shines that offering now. All right, so you can't you can't alter it like you said in verse 10. He shall not alter it nor change it. He's that perfect sacrifice. All right, let's read uh, verse. Those in the contrary, if it was an unclean beast, beast of which they do not sacrifice to Yahweh, well, then he shall present the beast before the priest. You have to show it to the priest, right? Read verse 12. Verse number 12. And the priest shall value it, whether it be good or bad, as thou value, value with it, who art the priest, so shall it be. Right. So the priest will value it and tell you whether it's good or bad. Verse 13. Verse number 13. But if he will at all redeem it, then he shall add a fifth part thereof unto thy estimation. You could redeem that unclean animal. You just had to add a fifth part or 20%. Okay. You had to add to that once they tell you brought that uh you uh, for the sake of conversation, you brought a rabbit, which is an unclean animal. They may say, okay, it's worth uh a shekel. All right. You would to to redeem that rabbit, you would pay. Uh, a shekel plus 20% of a shekel and they give you another rabbit. All right. That's an example. All right. So verse 14. Verse number 14. And when a man shall sanctify his house to be holy unto the Lord Yahweh, then the priest shall estimate it, whether it be good or bad, as the priest shall estimate it. All right. So, so you shall it stand. So, lucky. so if you wanted to uh take a long, this is when they say sanctify, you're sanctifying it because you're giving it unto the priest to use. Okay, so basically you're taking a loan out on your house. All right. If you take a loan out on your house, they you they'll look at your house, estimate it. If it's decrepit, they're gonna base the value of it on on that. All right. If, and the priest shall estimate it, so it shall stand. It won't alter. It's gonna be what they say. So it's not like today where. Uh, a house you buy a house for say three hundred thousand dollars all right it's a newly developed uh neighborhood you you spent three hundred thousand dollars there's only like four houses in the in the neighborhood because it's brand new and then when you buy your house it's worth three hundred thousand then they start building up houses all around you now you live in a subdivision now your house becomes worth less over time because guess who moved in the neighborhood we did so Esau doesn't do a just balance of things now that he's running the world. All right, let's get a precept. And the Most High hates that. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 11. Let's read verse 1. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. A false balance is an, ab a false balance is an ab is abomination to the Lord, Yahweh, but a just weight is his delight. Just wait is his delight. Abominations are something that the most high God hates, which is a false balance is one of those things. All right. So when he says in Leviticus, it says when he estimates it, the priest, so shall it stand. That's a just balance. We're not going to alter and fluctuate that thing. That's what it was then. That's what it's going to be. All right. And it'll and it'll be value, which we'll see later in, in the chapter is going to be value depending on how close we are to the year Jubilee. Because keep in mind, in the year Jubilee, if you don't understand that, then you need to go to, um, you need to go back to the year Leviticus 25. You can read about the year of Jubilee. But in the year of Jubilee, you got your possessions back. If you took a loan out, so example, say it's year, year of Jubilee, just to explain it real quick. When we came into the land, the promised land, that was year one. Jubilee uh, means 50, all right? So year one was when we came into the land, and we would count 50 years from the time we came into the land. Now, we don't do this anymore because we don't have our land, all right? But I'm led to believe that through the Spirit, when we get in our land, those things will be reinstated because the law of the Lord is perfect and it endured forever, Baruch 4 1. So the year of Jubilee can't start it when you got into the land that was year one okay in between that time if you like we're reading here if you took a loan out on your house 
if say it was in year five that you took that loan out, well, they give you more money because is the chances that you're going to not get that home back before year Jubilee are, are slim. You're probably going to want your house back. All right. Or your feel back or whatever it is that you took that loan out on. Right. But if it's say it's year 47, where they're going to estimate your house value and the loan that you can get at a lower rate, because all you got to do is wait three years and you get your home back for free. All right. So this is how we did commerce and, and ran our own economy within the whole world and all the other nations around us. We did our own thing. All right. Let's get a precept because we can see the wisdom of the Lord through through these types of laws. Deuteronomy chapter four. And let's start at verse five. Deuteronomy chapter four, verse five. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord Yahweh, my God, commanded me that you should do so in the land whither you go to possess it. So what we're reading is the laws that he taught us to do in the land that we were going to go in to possess. Read on. Verse number six. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Right. So we're supposed to do the laws and, and implement these types of things like we're reading in Leviticus 27. And we should be looked at as a wise nation in the sight of all the rest of the nations. Instead of how we're looked at now, we're looked at as not knowing what we're doing financially, illiterate. Um, a lot of us, if we want a loan, we don't know what to do. And we even walk into the bank. We don't know who to talk to. We don't understand interest rates and things like that. So we get bad credit before we even understand credit. All right. So, yeah, man, the laws of the Lord are perfect. And we can see the wisdom in it as we're as we're reading most high willing. All right. So let's go back. Leviticus 27. So this is you. You took a loan out on your house. They they estimated it. Whatever they estimated that shall stand. Verse fifteen. Verse number fifteen. And if he that sanctify it will redeem his house, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of thy estimation unto it, and it shall be his. All right. So you got a hundred thousand for your house. You're gonna add. It'll be a hundred and twenty thousand when you get it back. All right. If you want it back. OK. And depending on just where you got what year, how close to the year of Jubilee you were is going to determine how much you can get for that house. All right. Verse 16. Verse number 16. And if a man shall sanctify unto the Lord, Yahweh some part of a field of his possession, then thy estimation shall be according to the seed thereof. And Homer of barley seed shall be valued at 50 shekels of silver. All right. So you if you wanted to take a loan out on your field, the t depending on what you are growing in that field is going to determine the value of the field. OK, it says an omer of barley seed shall be weighed at 50 shekels of silver. So if if we can go to your field. So for every omer, we can go to your field and get that's you can get 50 shekels of silver. So you could just for the sake of conversation, say 50 shekels is fifty thousand dollars. So if you got a large field and we can get several omers out of it, that's you could come up. You know, you you could you could this is how we kept uh people from just being down bad. It took a lot for you to just be down bad and, and just living on the street. Like that's why David said, I've been rich and I've been poor. Let me see, let me get that in songs. The way we ran things back then was was uh was amazing, man. What that precept at? I've been rich. Hold on. I've been old. Yeah, Psalms 37 and 25. Let's read that. Psalm chapter 37, verse 25. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, mm -hmm. nor his seed begging bread. All right, so he said, I've been young and old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, because we always had in, in place 
some type of system to help our people, to help each other. And even then, in the spirit of the law, if you see your brother need help, then you're going to help him and w- without any expectation and anything in return. All right. So let's go back. So uh, verse 17. Leviticus 27, verse 17. And if he sanctify his field from the year of Jubilee, according to thy estimation, it shall stand. Mm-hmm. This is this. So it's based on where, how far plus or minus we are to the year of Jubilee. All right, read on. Verse number 18. But if he sanctify his field after the Jubilee, then the priest shall reckon unto him the money according to the years that remain, even unto the year of the Jubilee. And it shall be uh, abated, abated from thy estimation. Right. So the, that's how we dealt with it. Right. It, it was based on how far or close we were to the year of Jubilee. That's how they reckon with you or or base that estimation. All right. Read on. Verse number 19. And if he that sanctified the field will in any wise redeem it, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of thy estimation unto it. And it shall be assured to him. All right. So if you want your field back, it's 20 percent, whatever we gave you on top of that. Right. Read on. Verse number 20. And if he not redeem, if he will not redeem his the field or if he have sold the field to another man, it shall not be redeemed anymore. All right. You can't get it back once you sell it to another man. If you have not redeemed it. Right. Or if he have sold the field to another man shall not be redeemed anymore. All right, read on. But the field, when it goeth out in the Jubilee, shall be holy unto the Lord Yahweh, as the devoted, I mean, as the field devoted, the possession thereof shall be the priest. All right, so if you, if you goeth out in the year in Jubilee, then that's the Lord's. It's a devoted thing. You can't, and we devoted some things. We did. We just devoted to the Lord, right? And it, once you do that, it's the Lord's. You can't get it back, and that's spiritual, All right? Let's go to First Kings, First Kings chapter fifteen and verse fifteen. So that's the same way with us. When we devote ourselves to the Most High, we can't get it, get that back. You can't go back on that. All right, let's read that First Kings fifteen fifteen. First Kings chapter 15, verse 15. And he brought in the things which his father had dedicated, and the thing things which himself had dedicated into the house of the Lord Yahweh, silver and gold and vessels. All right, so things were dedicated. All right, silver and gold uh and vessels. We dedicated things. So that's just like us. We're that we're that gold. All right, the most high say you got um vessels of gold and vessels of silver in his house stand, representing us, Israel. You got some brothers that's of high value, some sisters that are of high value. You got some brothers and sisters that are of a little lower value. Everybody's not the same. All right. So you can't redeem something that's been dedicated to the Lord. All right. Let's get a precept. Let's go to so including your 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 life. Luke chapter 9 and verse 62, including yourself. Once you come into this truth and you dedicate yourself, you say, I understand, I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do what the Most High said, that stands. All right, let's read not Luke 9 and 62. Luke 9 and 62. And Yahushua said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of Yahweh. What that mean? You you devoted yourself to this work, to this truth. You look back, you go back into the world. You're not fit. You're not fit for the kingdom. So if you're not fit, you won't get in. That's plain. OK, so we it's very serious to 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 un, when you say you understand, you, you got to stand on that. All right. Leviticus 27 again. Let's go to let's read 21 again. 21. But the field, when it goeth out in the Jubilee, shall be holy unto the Lord Yahweh. As a field devoted, the possession thereof shall be the priest. Mm-hmm. You know. And if a man sanctify unto the Lord Yahweh a field which he had brought, I mean bought, which is not of the fields of his possession. Mm-hmm. 
Read on. Then the priest shall reckon unto him the worth of thy estimation, even unto the year of, of the Jubilee. And he, and he shall give thine estimation in that day as a holy thing unto the Lord Yahweh. All right. So if, if so if a man sanctify, if you take a loan out of a field to the Lord, which you bought, which is not of the fields of his possession, going into what? Um we all had a a, a, a possession of um uh trying to find a word. When we got the land, we all of us, all of the tribes had an inheritance. So there's some things that you got just through uh based on your lineage and what tribe you were in and what was passed down to you. Some things you got like that. Some things you may have gotten based on just a brother or sister that fell on hard, so like your hard times, and they sold that thing to you. All right, so that's dealing with that. If you if you sanctify that, you take a loan out on that, then the priest shall reckon unto him the worth of the estimation based on where we were at, close to close plus or minus to the year of jubilee, and he shall give thy estimation in that day based on where we were that determined the value of it. As an holy thing unto the Lord. Okay, verse 24. In the year of the Jubilee, the field shall return unto him of whom it was bought, even to him to whom the possession of the land did belong. Right. So in the year of Jubilee, that possession went back to the person who you bought it from. Okay, it went back to him. So either so that you see how the Lord works. He made sure that you you were able you were put in a position where you could keep you could keep you something, okay? You could keep you something even when it came down to, uh, like for instance, if you had a daughter, let's get that. If you had a daughter, and and you didn't have any sons, and your daughter wanted to marry, well, she had to marry somebody within her own tribe. All right, let's read Numbers thirty six and verse. Let's start at verse 6 and read now. This is the thing which the Lord Yahweh though a command concerning the daughters of is it saying? Zillah, Zillah for had. <laughs> Zillah for had. Saying let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So this is a, a man who had only daughters. He said he, they can marry who they want. But they got a married to somebody of the tribe of their fathers, right? Let's see why. Read on. So shall not the inheritance, inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. All right. So that your inheritance, so that if you were from Ephraim, you were Ephraimite. And you had all daughters. And some, some people just, they go on a string of daughters, no sons. All right. Um, and, and, and your daughters just kept marrying uh, Judites. Well, eventually what's going to happen is those Judites are going to accumulate all of the land from Ephraim. And Ephraim won't have an inheritance. So they had to marry somebody within their, within their tribe to keep things balanced, to keep uh a uh, just balance like we read in uh proverbs 11 and 1 all right read on verse 8 verse 8 and every daughter that possesses inheritance in any tribe of the children of israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father that the children of israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers all right, so you you would you would have to marry somebody of the tribe of your father, right? Let's get an example or, or an account of that happening. Let's go to the book of Tobit in the Apocrypha. Tobit chapter seven and verse number thirteen. So this is an example of when this took place. Tobit chapter seven and let's start at verse thirteen. Verse thirteen. Then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came forth, came to her father, and he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias, saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed them. Mm -hmm. So he said, take her after the law of Moses, meaning what? That that was his daughter. He didn't have any son. So she had to marry within her tribe. Right. Read verse 14. 
verse 14, and called Edna his wife, and took paper and did write an instrument of covenants and sealed it. All right, so this is not talking about a marriage license like I was taught, right? This is talking about they made an instrument of covenant saying my daughter is my own. I don't have any sons. Thus, my daughter is entering into a marriage with this property. She's bringing this into this property, into this marriage, Salakia. So that was what they wrote down based on the law of Moses that we read in Numbers chapter 36, verse 6 on down. All right, so the Most High was very particular about keeping your inheritance within that tribe. Okay, so let's go back to Leviticus 27 and try to finish this whole chapter. Uh, verse, um, I think I was at 19, even to the, yep, let's read verse 19. And if he that sanctified the field will any wise redeem it, then he shall add the fifth part of the money of thy estimation unto it, and it shall be assured to him. Mm -hmm. Read on. And if he will not redeem the field, or if he has sold the field to another man, it shall not be redeemed anymore. Mm -hmm. Read on. But the field, when it goeth out in the in the jubilee shall be holy unto the Lord Yahweh, as the field devoted, the possession thereof shall be the priest. All right, it'll belong to the priest, to the Lord, because the priest didn't have an inheritance. So this is how the Most High made sure that they were able to get an inheritance, so to speak, because their work purpose, their whole job was to work in the sanctuary. All right, read on. And if a man sanctify unto the Lord, Yahweh, a field which he had bought, which is not of the fields of his possession, mm -hmm. then the priest shall reckon unto him the worth of thy estimation, even unto the year of the jubilee, and he shall give thine estimation in that day as a holy thing unto the Lord, Yahweh. Holy thing to the Lord. Read on. In the year of the jubilee, the field shall return unto him of whom it was bought, even to him to whom the possession of the land did belong. All right. So we this will we really stopped that. So it'll go back to that brother or sister that it belonged to. All right. Read on. And all thy estimations shall be according to the shekel of the sanctuary. Twenty gerahs shall be the shekel. All right, 20 gera shall be the shekel. So that's like a 20, 20 a gera is like tw a 20th of a shekel. So 20 gera shall be the shekel. So they based it off of weight. Like, so a shekel would basically, like, this is dealing with corn, I believe. Let me go into a gera. I believe it's dealing with like corn or barley. Yeah. Okay, gear a weight a twentieth part of a shekel equal to the weight of sixteen barley grains or four to five carp carob beans. So that's how we did money based on how much how much do this sack of, of beans weigh? Okay, a, a shekel is eleven grams of of gold. So that's how we made the money work. That's how the money was was worked out back then. Okay, so. Uh, let's go back. All right, uh, verse twenty six. Verse twenty six. Only the firstling of the beast, which should be the Lord's firstling, no man shall sanctify it, whether it be ox or sheep or I mean, it is the Lord's. Yeah. Right. So you couldn't bring the firstlings of your beast. Those all belong. You couldn't take a loan out on them because they were supposed to be the Lord's anyways. All right, read on. And if it be of an unclean beast, then he shall redeem it according to thine estimation, and, sh and shall add a fifth part of it thereto. Or if it be not redeemed, then it shall be sold according to thy estimation. Okay, so you, if it was an unclean beast, you could redeem it, but it was a 20% tax on it or, or increase on it. And if it be not redeemed, then it shall be sold according to thy estimation. We could sell it to a heathen or somebody who may need it, whatever the case may be. And that would be that's how we kept income flowing up aside from uh, things that were just devoted to the most high. That's how we 
part of how we would keep income flowing. So this is that's kind of going into your your arms and your charity. You keep income going based on doing just balance of things. All right. If you get something, pay it back if you're able. OK. And and, and uh, just being doing charity. All right. Read on. Verse 28. Notwithstanding, no devoted thing that a man shall devote unto the Lord, Yahweh, of all that he have, both a man and beast. And of the field of his possession shall be sold or redeemed. Every devoted thing is most holy unto the Lord Yahweh. All right. So if you devoted something, that's the Lord's. You can't get that thing back. All right. Whether it's a man or a beast. What it, like an example of a man? Let's get that. Let's go to first Sam, first Samuel. So people would dedicate their children, like we see um in First Samuel, right? First Samuel chapter one and verse 28. So Hannah, this is dealing with the sister Hannah, our foremother Hannah. She she was barren and she prayed to the Lord to uh, give her a child. So this is what she said, verse 27. Verse 27. For this child I pray in the Lord, Yahweh, have given me my petition, mm -hmm. which I asked of him. The most high granted her prayer, right? Read on. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord, Yahweh, as long as he lived. He shall be lent to the Lord Yahweh, mm -hmm. and he worshiped the Lord Yahweh there. All right. So when you read this whole account, when um when Samuel was done breastfeeding, which was probably around three years old, she took Samuel to the to the sanctuary, and he stayed there, and they raised him there, and he he lived there all his life, and he he was a um a priest, a high priest, right? So that's an example of that dedicating your child. And she went on to have, I believe, six more children after that. So that goes to show you dedicate a thing to the most high. You could dedicate, I mean, in the day's turn, you could dedicate a camera, a uh, table and chairs, um, whatever whatever they, the, the congregation may need. And the most high I'll give you that thing tenfold, you know what I'm saying, if he sees fit. Okay. So let's go back to Leviticus 27, uh, verse 29. It gets 27, verse 29. None devoted, which shall be devoted of man, shall be redeemed, but shall surely be put to death. All right. So before you could get that thing back that you devoted, it had to be put to death. Basically, you can't get it back. <laughs> right? Read on. And all the type of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's Yahweh. It is holy unto the Lord Yahweh. All right, so the tithe is going into your tent. All right, you hear tithes talking about today in churches, but tithing was never dealing with giving 10% of your money, okay? Tithing had to do with seed of the land or fruit of the tree, all right? You gave 10% of that to the Lord, and you couldn't take a loan out on that, all right, so to speak, all right? We're going to read about it, but first, let's get a precept. Let's go to Numbers chapter 18, dealing with these tithes. Numbers chapter 18 and verse 26 through 28. Let's read that. Verse 26. Thus speak unto the Levites and say unto them, When ye take of the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then, sh then ye shall offer up in it and heave offering of it for the Lord, Yahweh even a tenth part of the tithe. All right, so you had to tie the tithe. That's what the Levites had to do. All right, the tithing was making sure once again that the Levites didn't um go without. So you had they had to take a tenth of what that of the tenth that that was brought to them and give it to the Lord. As you read in the, in the history, you see that these things started to become perverted over time, right? And with all the way to the day. All right, read on, verse 27. And this your heave offering shall be reckoned unto you as though it were the corn of the threshing floor and as the fullness of the wine press. Mm -hmm. Read on. Thus she also shall offer an heave offering unto the Lord, Yahweh, of all your tithes, which ye, which ye receive of the children of Israel. And ye shall give thereof the Lord's Yahweh heave offering to Aaron the priest. 
Right. So that's tithing, dealing with food. Um, and it's not talking about bring 10% of your paycheck. That don't, that ain't got nothing to do with tithing. Okay, so let's go back. So if y'all still going to church, you can you can stop paying them tithe. Matter of fact, come on out of there. Because they they just robbing you. All right, so Leviticus 27. Uh let's read verse 31. Leviticus 37, verse 20, I mean 27, verse 31. And if a man what all redeem ought his tithes, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. All right, so it's still not dealing with money. May basically you brought a tenth of your field, uh, which grew your field harvest. Well, like it said, uh, uh Omer was worth fifty shekels, so you had to add a twenty percent part to get that field harvest back, which don't make sense. It basically just makes better sense to just let the Lord keep it, and it'll grow again next year. All right, because you're wasting money. So that's there for if you want to do it, but it don't make sense to do it. Okay, read on, verse 32. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord your house. All right, so the, the, the things that were herded, like sheep, cattle, um, all types of sheep is cattle. But um, yeah, cattle in particular, things that pass under the rod. The tent shall be holy unto the Lord. Why? Because they were clean animals. All right, read on. He shall not search whether it be good or bad. Neither shall he change it. And if he change it at all, then both it and the change thereof shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. All right, so you couldn't bring a cow. You couldn't bring, a, uh, for example, a pig and get a sheep. You got back what you got, what you brought. And more than likely, like I said, it wasn't going to be your same exact sheep. You couldn't look at the sheep and say, oh, is it a good sheep? No, nah, you couldn't do that with, with, with the priest gate because that was why the priest was expected to do right by you. But over time, like I said, these things started to get perverted and, and the priest was was doing underhanded stuff right? because they became covetous of, of the other of the other tribes because they could accumulate wealth at the rate they wanted to accumulate it at the priests their job was to work in that sanctuary all right so they they became covetous and started to do underhanded practices okay so it says he shall not search whether it be good or bad neither shall he change it and if he change it at all then both it and the change thereof shall be holy it shall not be redeemed. It, it had to be the Lord's if you wanted to change it. All right. So basically you would change it to, to basically to, to dedicate that th thing back to the Lord. You couldn't get it back. Okay. Verse 34. Verse 34. These are the commandments which the Lord Yahweh commanded Moses for the children of Israel in Mount, in Mount Sinai. All right, so these are the commandments of the Lord, Yahweh. All right, so this is how we're supposed to do um, banks and banking and loans, right? Um, do, dealing with money and, and uh, uh, making sure that Israel stays straight, so to speak. All right, so all praises for the, to the Most High for that. Most High willing, we get back and closer and closer to our heritage, which is these law, statutes, and commandments as we enter in and get closer to the kingdom being brought in. In these last days, man. So all praises to the most high. Um, with that, uh, we looked at let me see what the time is. Yep, all praise. We ain't even go over an hour. Any brothers got any precepts? Um, definitely bring them out. Um, other than that, we got prophecy, real time prophecy coming up Thursday, most high willing, um, at 7 p.m. Getting into some current events, um, and linking them up to prophecy. If you haven't been to that class, um, come through and and, and and learn with us, man. And um, Sunday, we'll have um, Bible study at 7 p.m. All right. So uh, if anybody didn't have anything, we'll go ahead and shut it on down. All right. Appreciate everybody for coming to class. And um, with that, we're going to say Shalom. 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 Shalom.